Well, let's ask a guy who represents some of those commuters, and that would be Frank Cleese, former transport minister, but right now sitting with Tim Hudek in the progressive conservative opposition, MPP for Newmarket Aurora. Frank, do your voters up there in Newmarket, I mean, I got, when I was in Oakville, I had about the same drive, come down the 404. Uh, it's awful. Do they tell you, fix it? Uh, they do. And uh, by the way, I drive it every day as well. I'm on the uh, 404 by 6 o'clock every morning. If I do that, I'm uh, at Queen's Park in 45 minutes. Otherwise, we're looking at an hour and a half. Yep. And so, look, uh, I think everybody agrees that the transit issue has to be solved. Uh, we need to get on with doing that. Here's where we have a fundamental disagreement, though, uh, with the Wynn government. And that is that the, the knee-jerk reaction cannot be that we immediately reach into the pockets of taxpayers for another $2 billion. That is just not on. And, and by the way, uh, it's not just Christine Elliott uh, who is fighting against uh, additional taxes uh, and perhaps uh, uh, rightfully uh, convincing Jim Flaherty to take sides with us. It's also Andrea Horvath. Andrea Horvath has made it very clear uh, that tax increases are not on. So uh, Premier Wynne has a problem. And, and what we're saying is the $2 billion can be found in that $127 billion provincial budget. We proposed, give us an all-party select committee, we'll help you find those $2 billion in 30 days. Look, 15 months ago we had the Drummond Commission. That was a blue ribbon panel uh, that gave some 326 recommendations in how we can do government more efficiently. Let's draw on that, let's add to that, and let's find a solution that doesn't involve a tax increase. Do you th there, the politics here, I just enjoy watching Minister Flaherty. I know he doesn't like the, didn't like the McGinty government, doesn't like the Whig government as much as you guys. He used to get into it with Dwight Duncan all the time. But in this case, uh, the Whig government has not yet put any proposal for a tax increase. We know the Metrolinx report is out there calling for tax increases. Do you think then the Liberals have this Metrolinx proposal in the window? That is the flag, essentially they're flying up the flagpole to see if anybody salutes to it. Well, of course, that, that's all a part of it. Here's what's disappointing. Uh, the Metrolinx uh, blue ribbon panel has been at this for five years. They were given five years to come up with a proposal to solve this gridlock problem and to find two billion dollars a year. Five years. We could have found that in 30 minutes. Four taxes in 30 minutes, we could have come up with that. Here's what I believe. I don't, I don't believe that Kathleen Wynne can hold herself back from implementing major tax increases. She'll try and justify it. We would welcome uh, an election on that basis. I believe that when people hear that we can solve the transit problem, by becoming more efficient, by making government more transparent and accountable, that that's what they'll side for. I'd love to see Kathleen Wynne come forward and try to convince Ontario taxpayers who are already taxed to the limit that they should cough up another $2 billion for her transit plan. I don't believe it's going to be on. And so it'll be an interesting fall, an interesting spring. I don't know when uh, Andrea Horvath will have the courage to actually pull the plug. And we'll see. You know, I sit uh, two seats to the right of Andrea Horvath in the mm -hmm. legislature. Uh, I can tell you it's interesting to watch the contortions of this leader of the New Democrats. On the one hand, railing against the government for their waste, uh, disciplining and chastising them for the billions of dollars, whether it's e-health or orange or the gas plants. And then on the other hand, have to stand up and support their budget and keep them in office. I think even her caucus colleagues are getting tired of that game. Let me ask you one. This may be more in the philosophical realm, but this is how much responsibility the federal government has for some of the infrastructure issues in the GTA, particularly transit. And let me suggest that just as the feds say the lobster fishery is of national importance, and so folks on the East Coast and West to a degree are going to get some money, or the forest industry in B.C., this gridlock problem to the GTA, an engine for our national economy, the Fed's got some responsibility here as well. Look, there, there's no question about that. Uh, and, you know, to the credit of the federal government, uh, they put $650 million into the uh, Toronto subway project. Uh, without that, the, the, the provincial government would not have even been able to come to the table. Uh, the federal government put, I think, an, another $160 million into the reconstruction of Union Station. Uh, certainly the federal government cannot be accused of not being at the table. Would we like to see the federal government do more? Of course. But at the same time, we have to remember there is only one taxpayer. 
And I believe the federal government is doing Ontario taxpayer a service by saying, not on your life are we going to allow the provincial government to increase the HST. Why do I say that? Because if they simply were to open up the bank one more time and allow uh, the Wynn Liberals to get into uh, taxpayers' pockets, that's exactly what they would do. Now that the federal government is saying no, at least the Wynn government is going to be forced to, with us, to, to work with us to find those savings, hopefully, in the existing budget. Frank Lees is the MPP for New Market Aurora. He's on the road every day at 6 a.m. to Queen's Park. Thank you so much for joining us, Frank. Appreciate Pleasure. it. Thank you.